you know, I don't think everyone's going to be drawn to the way a Raku piece looks, because they do have this kind of grungy, intense look about them that I don't think everyone is really going to enjoy. Nor do I think people really know how to enjoy it, because they don't understand the depths of work that have gone into creating it. Most people do not give ceramics an artistic chance. They don't view ceramics as art. They view it as something functional, uh, which Raku is not, and so it's not, it's not really mainstream art. Raku began in Japan. It has a really ancient tradition over there. Um, but it didn't really start happening in America until the late 1950s. Uh, it was really led by a guy named Paul Soldner. Paul decided that he wanted to see what would happen in reduction. And so he was the first one to really try pulling pieces out of the kiln while they were hot and dropping them into sealed barrels of combustible material. And what this would do is the fire would flare up because the pots were so hot. And this would eat up all the oxygen within the chamber and would cause what's known as a reduction atmosphere where there's very little oxygen. And this causes the metals and the glazes to react a little bit more violently. You know, looking back, I think my love of ceramics really began at a really young age. And so it just seemed kind of natural that whenever I came to college and a ceramics course was offered, it just really sparked my interest because I, I had this love of molding things. And then, you know, within the class, we were all, we all had to raku fire at least one piece. Uh, and it was there that I, I really, really fell in love with it. Raku was the first, uh, first ceramics that I ever did. I took a class out here at IPFW when I was 15, made a whole bunch of stuff, and Raku'd it all. One of the things I really loved about Raku was the process, and was some of those, those Buddhist kind of qualities where that, that duality of nature and duality of all things where, you know, you get something, but maybe it's not exactly what you wanted. And, but sometimes it gets, you get something better. You get that instant gratification. In an hour, you get a piece that comes out, it comes out beautiful out of the can, or you get a piece that comes out of the can that was nothing like you expected it to. Um, and so I, I've always been kind of drawn by that duality. With Raku, there's something special about it. You know, a normal piece of ceramic takes several days to fire because it cannot take that thermal shock of changing temperature so quickly. But Raku goes from almost 18 to 1900 degrees down to 40 or 50 degrees almost instantaneously and it doesn't break. One of my favorite things about Raku is uh, the drastic change that it goes through from the kiln to whenever you pull it out of the barrel. Uh, this is a, a very extreme and violent change that occurs and it's this, this idea of a birth by fire that I think, you know, if you come at it in a certain aspect you can really see an allegory for life in this. I'm really interested in the, the beauty of the, the imperfect because um, there really isn't any perfection anywhere, and especially in nature. But I kind of like that unpredictable nature of things. It, you know, there's a lot of beauty to me in that. I love the, the act of taking steps and being able to modify different steps to change the outcome as I go along. Um, it allows me to experiment. Um, experimentation is a huge part of my artwork. Um, and a huge part of most of my processes is playing with things in a new way. Um, and Raku is just one more way to do that. You know, learning to throw on the wheel is a very intense technical skill, but it's one that I think anyone can learn. Now also in ceramics you do have more sculptural things, and these do take a little bit more of an artistic vision. Uh, and I've never really considered myself an artist. But the Raku process is so extreme and volatile that it allows me to be a lot more expressive than I can be in a traditional sculpture. You know, I can take a, a regular everyday bowl and after I raku fire it, it can be a beautiful piece of art. Uh, and this is, this is really the only artistic outlet that I have in ceramics. It screams that freedom, that just letting things happen the way they happen, that just like in life, you only have control over so much control what we do, but what happens in that kiln or in that can is up to is up to something else that we can we unfortunately we just can't can't do anything about.